So let's see if you can relate to some of the things I was looking for when I made the decision to launch my own business actually back in 2005. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to set my own schedule. I wanted to work with people that I wanted to work with, not necessarily people I had to work with. I wanted to make as much or as little as I wanted. So if that's you, you want to control your income. You know, that's, that's kind of where I was. I wanted to have a part-time business or a full-time business. I wanted to have the option. I wanted to join a community of other consultants that would support each other and, and cheer each other on. I knew I didn't want to do this by myself, but I wasn't sure where to go or what to do. I wanted to be trained and mentored by the best in the industry. And I wanted to shorten the learning curve. I knew that I didn't have a lot of time to spend going to get a degree is a four year process at least. So, you know, I had already done that and I didn't want to have to go and start over and start, you know, starting a new career and spend years and years learning and creating before I could ramp up and start making money. I wanted to learn fast and I wanted to gain credibility as an expert fast. So if you're like I was, you may be experiencing some of these issues as you struggle with the decision to start your own business or expand your existing one. Maybe you're already working a full-time job like I was, and maybe you don't like it. Or maybe you're working too many hours for not enough money in your existing business. Maybe you don't have any credibility and you feel like a fraud, like who am I to, to teach somebody how to get organized? What do I know? Maybe you just don't have the confidence and credibility to do that yet. Maybe you just don't know where to start. I sure didn't. And y'all, your next thought when you think about starting your own business is, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get clients? Right, that's a big one, Barbara. We hear that one all the time. How am I gonna get clients? I knew I was pretty good at, good at organizing, but I didn't have the credibility or the systems to follow, but I, I knew I could figure that part out. But the next part was the getting the clients part. How am I gonna get people to pay me to do this? And then maybe you don't have a mentor. You don't have a clear system to follow. You don't have a mentor. And maybe you don't have the money to start, quote, a real business. The average franchise today costs more than $25,000. And I certainly didn't have that. So I needed something I could start for a lot less, but also have the, the benefits of a franchise concept of systems and, and a proven system to follow. So I struggled with my decision to start my business for over a year. My only regret is that I didn't take the leap sooner, I have to admit. I, at the time, I had worked in family preservation and operations. I had actually gone to school to become a teacher, but I ended up working in family counseling. And in the process, I found myself organizing our company's offices. In, we had multiple locations along the East Coast, and I was the one that would go in and just automatically start organizing things. So if, that, if you guys are on here and you're listening and you're like that, you're the one that goes to your family holiday and you start organizing the paper in the kitchen or organizing their, their kitchen. You know, that's where I was. I started organizing the offices and I thought, gosh, there's so much more efficient ways to do the things that we're doing here. So I kind of became the organizer. You know, that's Andrea. That's one of the yeah. things I was talking to somebody the other day who's um, thinking about what, you know, starting her own business that she's employed right now and not really happy with it and really frustrated. And she said, every single job I've ever had, I've always ended up organizing. It's like, <laughs> that's, and then she's bored. And that's what happens a lot of times is people mm -hmm. go in and they like the part that's the organizing part and then they get bored. Or it's the other side that we've seen with a number of our consultants is where they have seen how their companies lost money and how employee, how unhappy employees were because of disorganization, how things could have been a whole lot better if they had really had a system, but they weren't respected. They weren't given the respect to actually implement what they knew. So the idea that they could take something that they knew from experience uh, would make a big difference is, is a huge opportunity. Absolutely, that's so true. And I know a lot of the people that we talk to that join our program and just professional organizers in general, they have similar experiences in their work life that they were the ones that were always coming up with the plans and the ideas and, the, and creating the systems. And it's, it's difficult when you see inefficiencies at work. And like you said, Barbara, maybe they're not given permission or the, or the authority to make those changes. But then at some point they're either downsized or they get so frustrated and fed up with the job like I did that they leave and they're looking for something else to do. And this may be the perfect thing for them. You know, this may be becoming a productivity consultant may be the perfect next step for you. 
So, um, so that was me. You know, I was working as a family counselor focused on family systems. There's that word, systems. And I was always creating organizing systems that would make my colleagues and me more efficient with the mounds of paper. We had tons of paperwork and documentation. At the time we were using, we were faxing all of our paperwork. This is, I was so excited when we could finally email our reports. <laughs> then this wasn't that long ago. It makes me think of something too. There was recently a study, I guess it's like two years old now, but it was a study done by Adobe of 5,000 office professionals. And 46% said that they would change jobs if the only difference was less paperwork. Isn't that amazing in this day and day? I was even shocked. I mean, even though this is the industry I'm in, I was still I shocked was by that. And but the things that we talk about, while it applies to paper, it applies to digital just the same. It's all it's all about decision making, and it's the same the same thing. But it really is a huge issue in in business today. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. So um, you know. While my counseling job had its rewards, I traveled more than I wanted to for work. I felt like I was a slave to my pager. You guys remember those back in the day? And cell phone. I felt completely controlled by my clients and my boss. And basically I was fed up, but I didn't know where to turn. I literally felt like I was drowning. So because I liked the operation side of things a lot, I thought about starting my own organizing business, but I didn't know where to start. I remember, Barbara, I had found a book or maybe I searched for it. I don't even know how I even came to know that this was even a possibility until I found you. I had found an ebook by someone, you know, how to start your own organizing business. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is actually a thing? Um, this, is a, this is a possibility? But it will be, you guys will hear the rest of the story, it'll be another year before I actually did anything. So I don't want you guys to wait. If you're hearing this webinar and you're, you're feeling some, you're, this is resonating with you, don't wait, don't wait. So I wanted so desperately to quit my job, but I was afraid of letting go of my job security, which we now know doesn't really exist in the world anymore. I was afraid I didn't know enough. Like I said before, maybe you feel like a fraud, like, ah, uh, you know, how are they, somebody going to pay me to help them when I, you know, I don't really know if I know how to do this. I had no real world experience as a professional organizer and I didn't even know what a productivity consultant was. So some of you that are on this webinar that are already professional organizers, you were already far, far further along than I was because I didn't even know that this really existed or it's certainly a productivity consultant. If I did know of a professional organizer, I thought only people who organized your kitchen, your garage, your closets. I never, it never even occurred to me that there were people that would come into an office and help people with their paperwork and their filing systems, which I naturally was good at, but didn't know that there was a place for it other than maybe having a job. I didn't know that there was a, I could have my own business doing it. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find clients that would pay me to help them get organized and be more productive. And then one day, everything changed. <laughs> I was looking, actually praying for an organizing solution for physical files, so the filing cabinet, lots of filing cabinets, in my boss's very disorganized office. So this was still the family preservation company I was working for. I had gone into the operations side and was working directly for the vice president, and I was working in her home office. And every single time I went, I had to drive three and a half hours from my home to get to her home office. And she would say, you've got to come up here and organize my office. I can't find anything. And so I would drive, I'd make the trek up there and spend a couple of days. She would sometimes not even be there. She'd be gone and I would just create all these systems. I would declutter, I would organize. I'd set up all these fabulous alphabetical files. And she would come back and I couldn't wait to show her and the excitement to let her just walk in and see this transformation. And she would walk in and she would immediately throw her tote bag down that she picked up at the new conference that she had just come from with more stuff. So then I had to figure out how to file that. But then she would always say, well, it looks great, but I can't find anything. And I would get so frustrated, emotionally frustrated. And, you know, because I would name something one thing and she would look for it, you know, in another place. A simple example, and Barbara used this example all the time, Somebody may have a, a file for car. So somebody might put car under C and they put all their car information under C, but their spouse comes in and is looking for it under A for automobile. But I, if 
filed it under V for vehicle. <laughs> so, you know, the information was there, but she couldn't find it. And so it was very frustrating. And one day, literally, I was sitting at my boss's desk and I turned, I was crying because here it was happening again. And I turned around and I just, and I just typed a search for filing system and Barbara Hemphill popped up. And so you guys are going to learn in, in a few minutes who Barbara really is. But this was, I was like, okay, there's actually, who is this Barbara? Oh, she just lives two hours from my home. So, and she had this program that helped people find anything they filed in seconds. So I immediately started, you know, paying attention to that. I was listening to Barbara, you had some, you did some video blogs or audio blogs at that time, I think. So I was, your voice was ingrained in me and you were teaching this, what you called a finding system that helped people literally find anything they filed in seconds. And here I am, that's the exact problem I was trying to solve, right? So I ordered the program and at the time it was a software program that was based off of Barbara's books. And I immediately set it up in my own office, fell in love with it. I, I then, the true test was I set it up in my boss's office and she loved it it worked that was another test she would come back from a trip and i had taught her how to do a quick search in the system and she was able to pull up exactly what she was looking for and it was a true lifesaver and so it made sense to me and i got excited about it i remember barbara somehow we connected and i think i had ordered the software and then someone from your office had called me and and said you know we can actually come to your boss's office and do it for her or you can join our consultant training program and learn how to do it yourself for her. And so I, I got really excited about that idea. But then honestly, I literally put it on hold. I said, okay, I'm too busy now. I don't have time. I'm really, that is exciting and intriguing to me, but I don't have time. A whole year went by and then somebody else from Barbara's office contacted me again and said, hey, at one time you had considered joining our program and learning how to serve you know, other people, how to help other people get organized. And at that time, that was it. I was like, yes, now's the time. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. So I got excited. I signed up for the program. And to be honest with you guys, I did not have the money at the time to do that. I borrowed the money from my ex-father-in-law to take this training because it was that important. And I, I just, I figured it out. I knew it was what I needed to do and I knew I needed to figure out a way to do it, to make it happen. And it was the best decision I could have made. So at the time I traveled two hours to Raleigh and Barbara, you had your consultant training program on site physically for a week, a couple times a year. And so I remember sitting in the hotel conference room with 14 other people there were 15 of us total 14 other people all learning about how to become a productivity consultant that would help business owners get organized or people that had dealt with paper and now email get organized and i was in heaven i was like these people think like me <laughs> i didn't know they existed and barbara was just two hours away from me so I immediately fell in love with the industry. Some of them were already existing professional organizers and they all looked up to Barbara. She was this, this big, larger than life person and I soon found out why. So really, I took the training, I fell in love with the business and I gradually decreased the time at my job. Over time, I didn't quit my job right away, but I went from full-time to part-time to even less time. And within five months was able to actually leave my job completely and, and build a business, helping people get organized. So that was a phenomenal experience. And so literally, like I said, that when I realized one of the services that, that Barbara taught me how to do was called the eight hour miracle. We now call it the office transformation VIP day, but it's basically one day with one person in one office. And I made more money that one day than I did in two weeks at my job, at my full-time job. So when that happened, I gained the confidence, like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. That's when I knew that it, that it was time. So I soon learned how to provide that same service virtually. So if that's something that, if you're on this webinar and you're thinking, oh, wow, it'd be so nice to be able to work from home, 
and help people online. And we didn't even, we weren't even using the internet really for the virtual at that time. It was telephone, right? Oh yeah, all through the telephone. We'd send pictures. We'd have people yeah. take pictures of their office. And sometimes we didn't even do that. I was gonna say, I didn't even do pictures because I think I was scared. <laughs> I, I was scared to see, if I had seen the pictures, I might've been overwhelmed, too overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did is I took, you know, Barbara, you had everything structured out so perfectly. It was do, first do this, then do this, then do this, ask the client this. And it was very step by step. And I printed that out and I had this step by step print out next to me while I'm on the phone. So they couldn't see me like you guys see us now. We didn't have this then. We weren't even using Skype. We, this was strictly over the phone. And I would, you know, go through the list. I was like, Barbara says to say this. So I would say this. <laughs> and then I led them through and it was amazing. And I remember the very first one I had said, I, it was a woman in New Mexico that was a real estate developer. And I remember she said, well, how much is this going to cost? And I held my breath and I was like, I said, $1,200. And I didn't say anything because I was taught not to say anything after you say the price. And she was like, okay, well, how do I pay? And I thought, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This person, I'm going to help her organize her office. I'm not stepping foot in her office. She's never seen my face. I've never seen hers. And she's going to pay me $1,200. So I would charge more than that now. But at that time, and she had no idea that she was my first virtual client. So, and we became great. I mean, I ended up working with her for months and months after that. So it became a really great relationship. <laughs> I didn't think of it until just now, but the first client I had, I charged $10 an hour. $10. <laughs> <laughs> and lived in horror that somebody was going to make, ask me what made me think I was worth $10 an hour. <laughs> yeah, and here I was being worried about 1200 <laughs> Things change, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so good. These are good memories. I hope you guys are, are kind of relating. So it, this was fun. Like I had no, I didn't have the confidence, but I had a system. I had a system. So anyway, long story short, how are Barbara and I working together now? So basically I saw the power and the value of the systems that Barbara taught. And she had this beautiful binder and every, we would all go, the training was, you know, you take off a week and you'd go, you know, for a week and, and stay in Raleigh and go through the training. And I thought, Barbara, we could, we could actually serve people all over the world if we turned this into a virtual training program. In 2005, there were not a whole lot of virtual things going on. Uh, 2005, 2006, 2007, this, this was new. And so, but I had this vision that we could take Barbara's content rich, incredible, phenomenal training and be able to impact people all over the world. And so we did, we put it together, we teamed up and we created an elite, I like to call them elite because they are, productivity consultant training and virtual training and certification program for productivity consultants. And what that's what we now call our certified productive environment specialists. So um, let me just tell you a little bit about that and we'll go into a little bit more detail in a few minutes. But that program dispelled a lot of myths and misconceptions that I had when I first started my business. I used to think I needed to have a lot of money, you know, to, to start a real business. Like I said earlier, I thought I had to have a college degree to be successful. Now I do happen to have a college degree in elementary education, but I learned that that's not a requirement. If you've got a skill set and you've got a desire and a passion and you're coachable and teachable, you do not have to have a college degree to start your own business and do this as a productivity consultant. If you get the proper training and you have systems, I thought that I needed to wait until I could focus 100% before getting started. A lot of times that's something that we do here. Well, I want to, I want to make sure I want to wait because I have all this going on. I want to wait, make sure I can do it hundred percent. That is a form of procrastination. And so that is another reason that we created the program online so that it can be, it is created for busy people. It is the, the way our program is set up is for busy people to actually get the training that they need virtually on their own schedule. And I thought I would need to leave my office, family, business to get trained like I did. Uh, but now because it's an online training program, you don't have to do that. So uh, basically going through that process, I found that I could start and operate my business for a lot less than a traditional franchise would cost. Although I had the benefits of franchise concepts through a team approach, shared resources and world-class mentoring from one of the best in the industry. So for those of you that don't know who Barbara is, I think a lot of you do probably because you've been on our website and you've maybe read some of her books. But for those of you that don't know, 
here I am, you know, in 2005 saying, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't know, I know. Barbara actually launched, helped launch the entire industry. There was no industry, there was no organizing and certainly not a productivity consulting industry back when Barbara started. And here she is still growing, going strong today. So Barbara, why don't you jump in now? And like I said, you compared, you know, I was nervous about charging 1200. You were nervous about charging 10 <laughs> when you started. So tell us a little bit about your story and how this all kind of came to be and where we are now. Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say what a joy it is to have Andrew on this call. We call each other peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> and uh, Before this call is over, I think you'll, you'll know why. We just love working together and we're very complimentary to each other. So uh, we wouldn't be here without everything that you've done and I'm very grateful. Thank um, you, Barbara. Ditto. <laughs> in 1978, my first husband and I had lived in India where we'd adopted three orphan children. They were under all under seven one of whom was mentally disabled and needed a lot of special care. We lived in New York City on the Upper West Side. My husband worked for a nonprofit and didn't make enough money to pay for living expenses in New York. So I knew that I needed to bring in some extra money. But I wanted to make sure that my family came first and I decided the best way to do that would be to work for myself. And that the way to work for myself would be to simply listen to what people were complaining about that I knew how to solve that people would pay me for. And I explored a lot of things. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, uh, and so I'm pretty handy. And I, I could do little repair work, uh, little plumbing jobs and electrical jobs and things like that. And we lived in a big high rise. And so I thought, oh, you know, I could have kind of a home repair service. That'd be something I could do. Well, there's unions in New York, so you know, you couldn't do that. And, and then somebody invited me to go to a class at uh, Riverside Church on life planning, I think it was called. And I think six Wednesday nights and all day Saturday. And it was basically helping you figure out what you want to do when you grow up and looking at what your loves, what you like to do and things like that. And at that point, Stephanie Winston, and I call her the mother of our industry because she wrote the first book. It was called Getting Organized. The cover of it looked like a yellow legal pad. And she was speaking at the 92nd Street Y, and I went to hear her speak, and everything she talked about were things that I knew. Because growing up on the farm in Nebraska, my family, we were lived in the second floor of a tenant farmhouse uh, with no running water in the, in the beginning. My mother worked at a bank. She worked there for the same man for 46 years. She was all about systems. My daddy had a dairy herd, and so there were all kinds of systems related to breeding and feeding and all those things. So I grew up in an environment where everything was about systems. I wasn't a naturally organized person. My degree was in music. I'm a right brain creative type. I love to start things. I don't like to finish things. I like the big picture and I don't like details. But I grew up in an environment where systems were just the norm. And I thought everybody was that way. And then when I became a parent, basically, and I, I would see a lot of other families, I realized that how many families didn't have systems for laundry and shopping and filing and, and everything like that and I'd be on the playground and I hear people say you know we haven't eaten off the table in a month because it's a pile full of papers or we had to file an extension or income taxes because I couldn't find the receipts or I'm fighting with my husband about the clutter or my kids about their messy rooms and I thought man they just didn't have my mom and dad so I took seven dollars out of the grocery money which was a big deal because I used to walk 20 blocks because I didn't have 50 cents for the bus and ran this ad June the 5th, 1978, that said, disorganized, I organize closets, files, kitchens, you name it, call Barbara Hemphill and had my phone number. And the first three calls were crank calls from guys trying to pick me up. And the fourth call was from a widow, 58, 55, 55 years old, I think she was. Her husband was an attorney and like the shoemaker's kids with no shoes, it was the attorney who died leaving his own things in a mess and his office both at home and at work was a complete disaster just piles of paper everywhere and his wife who had no idea what to do and they didn't have any children so in some ways I did what a, a, a daughter might have done she did not know that she was my first client and I never told her I was frankly terrified that you know I was like what am I doing because I, I didn't there was no role model or anything but I just started 
making decisions. You know, it's like I started sorting. It's like, okay, this pile, I got to talk to the stockbroker and this pile of the insurance agent and, and whatever. And that was how it started. And to promote the business, I would go to garden clubs and PTAs and church groups and anybody that let me and I would do a speech on, you know, 10 ways to get organized for Christmas or 10 ways to organize the kitchen or 10 ways to organize your kids or whatever. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't even have business cards. And that's, that's how it all started. I moved from New York City to Washington, D.C. And I went to the Washingtonian Magazine, which if you know anything about Washington, that's the classy magazine there. I knew the people there had money or to read it. So I called the editor, I made a cold call to the editor and explained that I had just moved from New York City and I had a service that I thought would be of interest to her readers. And she was fascinated. And we talked for about 45 minutes and she did an article. And so in 1979, there was an article that said for $10 an hour, you could get Barbara Hemphill to come to your house and organize your filing system. And it showed me with a filing system. I very quickly discovered that paper was the number one organizing challenge. And ironically, in spite of the promise of the paperless world, it still is in many households. Junk mail, artwork, memorabilia, insurance policies, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, people get stuff electronically, but they, they have the paper stuff too, because they don't know what to do with it and they're afraid to get it let go. And um, so, and the question then people asked me was, how long do I keep? And the question that came up in the 80s a lot were bank statements, because back in those days, you've got the printed out bank statements, those big, thick things that you got that people stuck in boxes and put them under their bed or in the garage or the closet or something. And they asked me the question, how long do you keep it? And I didn't really know the answer. And I thought, well, I could find that out from the library. Uh, but there wasn't a book in the library. And I thought that's really interesting because it doesn't make any difference if you earn $18,000 a year or $800,000 a year, you still need to know the answer to that question. And so I wrote a book called Taming the Paper Tiger. And that really launched my career. I did a lot of speaking. And then I began to realize that this, the same principles applied in businesses as well. In uh, the early 90s, I was approached by a software company that said they'd read all the organizing books and that they could turn mine into software. I didn't have any idea what that meant. Uh, that launched my, the book, Taming the Paper Tiger, launched that whole name of me being the paper tiger lady. And for two decades, I had a closet full of tiger striped clothing and suitcases and umbrellas and briefcases and purses and everything that you could you could imagine because I was the paper tiger lady. I was one time on an airplane and a gentleman tapped me on the shoulder and he said, are you the paper tiger lady? And I said, I am, how did you know? And he said, well, I heard your voice and I saw your suitcase. <laughs> and so then I stood in the middle of the aisle on the airplane explaining what the paper tiger lady was <laughs> so that's funny and to this day i still get introduced that way there are still people that knew me 20 and 30 years ago that introduced me as the paper tiger lady so that's really how that started then it kind of evolved because i i've reinvented myself numerous times and in fact i did a video after two decades of wearing tiger clothes, I decided that that was enough, that I was kind of tired of it. And so I hired a wardrobe consultant to help me pick a new wardrobe. And we went shopping and I came back with this whole new wardrobe, which ironically, it turned out the colors were the colors of the logo in the Productive Environment Institute, which was, that was an accident, but it turned out that way. And we ended up doing a video called, uh, Can a Tiger Change Her Stripes? And I, it showed me switching my wardrobe out. And the message of it was that change is a permanent condition of a healthy individual and a healthy organization. And I love the fact that I turned 70 years old in December. Next year will be the 40th anniversary of my business. And I love it more today than ever before. I'm more excited about the opportunities that exist. Uh, my passion is helping people accomplish their work and enjoy their lives. We define a productive environment as an intentional setting in which you can accomplish your work and enjoy your life.